This is the Civilization 4 NLL. Welcome to the Noble Leaders League. I am Jotlaik and this is the first division game between Catherine and Peter. The Russian Derby in other words. And while the English and the French Derbies are played in the lower leagues, the Russian Derby is held in the first division. Both of these leaders have had some mixed results in the opening five games of the season. Catherine is number nine in the league with four points after two wins and three losses. Peter is number 11, also on four points, after one win, two draws and two losses. Catherine is on a three-game dip blue run. She has not won all of them, by the way. She has only won one, and then she has lost her last two games. Peter is on a winless streak of three games now, with one draw and two defeats. So, both of them are in need of a win here to get their season into gear again. So, let's see what will happen. Starting positions. This is Catherine's. Let's get the resource bubbles on to see what she has around herself. This is on the eastern continent. Eastern continent is the starting continent and she has pigs, there is iron, there is fish and there are three places where she can build quarries for stone. Peter as the second Russian leader has the alternate colors of uh, whitish, white grayish and he's next to a river. There is jungle here and uranium but he also has gems and sugar and a little bit up here there is corn. He has a lot more green lands around his starting position while Catherine has a little bit less but uh, yeah she would need to go down here and uh, get uh, some cities down on uh, the southern part of the continent as well because this little outcropping in the top is not going to be enough. Now let's see what happens in the Russian Derby when we get the game underway. Catherine versus Peter. And uh, we can already see that Peter is now uh, pleased uh, with Catherine. You see the little green face there? Um, oh, now it disappeared, now he is cautious. But that green face, that has uh, fooled me a little bit because I have been looking at Diplo wins and I have seen green numbers on the victory condition screen there. That means that they are friendly, but here on the uh, list when the game is going on the leader list, green uh, does not mean friendly, green means pleased. So that has uh, fooled me a little bit, sorry about that. And now let's comment the game, Catherine Peter, 7 cities each, we are at turn 156, wow I have missed the first 150 turns of the game. But uh, Catherine is stronger than Peter, but Peter is pleased with Catherine, they are in different religions though, so that could help this a little bit. Let's see, 9 cities Peter, 7 to Catherine, Peter does have more land available, but it depends whether now Catherine can get down there go through Peter's lands and found some cities down on the southwestern part of the continent. If she does not, then Peter is going to have a huge advantage that he has right now with 12 cities versus 7. And Peter is also going optics, Catherine is going for nationalism though, turn 225. 13 cities to Peter, 7 to Catherine, and it does look like Peter is going to get all the rest of the continent. Now 14 cities to 7, and that is a huge advantage. Catherine is getting astronomy right now though, and going for, straight for gunpowder after that. She's 0.9 the strength of Peter, but she has astronomy, so she can, and she does settle the new world. She has settled both in the far west and now on the continent just in the middle there. We see she has two cities in those places. There's up to nine cities, Peter with 15. He has not founded cities in the new world yet, but Catherine has. And can Catherine also make more of them? Yes, she can. She is expanding in the new world. 
currently without competition from Peter, but there Peter also has reached uh, the new uh, settlement uh, in the southern part of the continent in the middle there with one city. Now he has another one as well. 17 cities, Peter, 12 to Catherine. Peter is uh, pleased with Catherine. Peter is not in a religion anymore. 18 cities to 12. This could be a space race, it could be a race for culture, it could even be Diplo. It doesn't look to me like it is going to be a military solution in the Russian Derby, but it is too early to tell. We have played 308. 3 9 turns. 21 cities, Peter. Peter has been expanding very well now after he got astronomy himself. 22 cities to 14 for Catherine. And Catherine is only point for the strength of Peter. Maybe Peter is now building up. He is pleased with Catherine, so it is a very... It is not... And Catherine! Oh, Catherine! Oh, Catherine! What are you doing? You are trying to go for culture. Is that it? When did you start doing that? I didn't catch it immediately, did I? She is trying to go for a cultural victory here, Catherine, with 14 cities and in no particular danger from getting attacked by Peter. But if Peter grows too strong, then maybe he could. Now she is trying her best to get that cultural uh, production up, but only 30, between 30 and 50% of the cultural slider. She is going to need a little bit of money as well sometimes. Catherine going for democracy, but she is going very slowly. Peter is going assembly line and 27 cities to 14. And Catherine trying to go for that cultural victory. It is her only hope, because if she cannot do that, then Peter is probably going to win space or something. Catherine, whoa, what did you do there? Okay, she is back on the slider. I am looking all over the place. 15 cities to Peter's 28, and Peter is the biggest on biggest leader here. But uh, can he uh, sniff out that Catherine is trying to go for culture here and attack a preemptive attack to stop her from winning that cultural victory? Because if Peter doesn't do that, he is in danger of losing this. Catherine with 15 cities. Going towards a cultural victory. We are at turn 390. She started so early that she will get it unless Peter can stop it. And Peter now on plastics. 28 cities to 15. And Peter has a lot more production base. He is a lot stronger militarily. But will he attack Catherine? He is pleased with her. So probably not. That means turn 400 is here. Turn 400 has come and gone, and it looks like Catherine is still on her way towards that cultural victory. And uh, But Peter now, Peter has attacked. I Peter has attacked. Peter has attacked. 29 to 14. Catherine is down to 14 cities. She has lost one imme almost immediately. Turn 4, 10 now. 13 cities for Catherine. And Peter is taking advantage of the weak Catherine that tried to go for culture but uh, seems to be failing down to 12 cities she of course if she can keep enough land to not lose domination and then get herself up to she is still trying to go for that cultural victory but now she's down to 11 cities will she get it or will peter get domination i think peter is going to get domination first because now catherine's cities are falling so fast she's down to 10 cities now 10 cities left, turn 420. And Peter has also completed the spaceship part. The docking bay, 33 cities to 10, but Peter needs to win domination here and to avoid Catherine winning culture. She's down to 9 cities now. This must be over. This must for sure be over now. 8 cities for Catherine. Peter, where is the domination? Where is the domination? Win 8 cities left for Catherine. Turn 4, 26. Peter has completed the casing, but that's going to be too late. 8 cities for Catherine. Eight cities, seven cities for Catherine. And now, Peter, where is your domination win? 
five cities left and there it is turn 429 2009 AD Peter did eventually attack he sniffed out that there was trouble that Catherine was going to go for culture and he could not allow that so he did attack the weaker leader and he got his two points congratulations Peter Peter declared the only war in 1983, that's turn 403. Ten cities captured, zero cities lost. Domination victory in 2009 on turn 429 after 26 years and 26 turns in war. Let's go take a look at the statistics. These are then the graphs. Peter is white and Catherine is red. GNP, that was actually pretty even until 1900 something. Production, Peter started getting ahead in around, this is what, 16, 1700 something. Food, Peter was number one for most of the game. Power, it was even until 1750, 1800 something here, and then Peter went ahead. Culture, this was Catherine's game, but then she lost a few of her cities that were doing her cultural stuff, so she lost it in the end, but she could have won it. Espionage, that was Peter. Number one all the time. Demographics then. Catherine's numbers to the left, Peter's numbers here. And he has 414,000 square kilometers versus Catherine 72,000, 48, almost 48 and a half million people. Now we see 1298 production, that's very good production. And 830 food is, food is also good food. Top six cities in Wonderstand. Let's take a look at the Wonders list first. Let's go to the bottom. One, two, three, four, five wonders in the BC era. Stoner's Great Wall Temple of Artemis Oracle and the Great Lighthouse and the rest in the AD. And you can see the cities and you can see they are all Russian, of course, because these are all Russian. Peter with the number one city, number two city, number three city and all number six cities. Going to the statistics, we see that Catherine has founded 15 cities, 6 religions founded, 1 golden age. Currently 8 mines, 7 towns, 4 windmills, pastures, cottages. 
in her cities she built 11 lighthouses, 10 forges and granaries. Notre Dame at the bottom there, let's go page down. And there are a lot of wonders here I see. Angkor Wat at the bottom, so let's go page down again. And confirm that the Apostolic Palace is the last on the list, together with the Chichen Itza down there. Current units for Catherine, seven grenadiers, seven workers, down to one spy at the bottom. She trained a total of 34 galleons, 26 Hindu missionaries, 25 longbowmen, then 24 Jewish missionaries, 23 Islamic missionaries, 22 Christian missionaries. I think there is a reason you are losing the wars, Catherine. I'm sorry to say, but that's just it. You've got three great scientists. Page down. And the bottom of the list is a knight. What did you kill then in the wars? One privateer and one infantry. Yeah, that was very, very good of you, I guess. Your losses then. 20 longbowmen, 19 grenadiers, 11 musketmen. And all the way down to a pikeman. So, Peter. 28 cities built, 1 religion, 3 golden ages. Currently 73 windmills, 46 towns and 37 lumber mills. Built in your cities, 28 granaries, 26 barracks, 23 factories and forges. 11 castles is there. Let's go page down. Start of the wonders here. Pentagon, Rock and Roll, Statue of Liberty. Taj Mahal is here. Sistine Chapel is there. Page down. Down and at the bottom we see the University of Sang Kor, also Muslim name of Mesolos is a good one. Hanging Gardens is here, let's not comment anymore on that, but look at the current units instead. 115 infantries, 38 tanks, 31 workers, 2 workboats at the bottom there. You trained a total of 38 tanks, 34 riflemen, 30 longbowmen, all the way down to six catapults at the bottom there. Let's go page down and find that the last on the list is one warrior. Kills 20 longbowmen, 19 grenadiers, 11 musketmen, down to one pikeman, and then of course the losses one privateer and one infantry. So congratulations to Peter with the win. Let's go take a look at the cities and the victory condition screen then. Peter then 77% of the land area, 91% of the population. So he did win a domination. Uh, he was very far away from culture and uh, so was Catherine in the end because she lost her cultural cities most probably. The Apollo program built by Peter. He has finished one docking bay and two of the casings. And United Nations not yet built, but the Apostolic Palace was built by Peter. That didn't matter much at all. Let's go exit and find the cities. These are the cities of Catherine. She has five of them. Tula, Pop 11, Tobolsk 8, Vor Voronezh 7, Kostroma 7 and Caracas 4. And we see the unhealthiness. Yeah, and she's actually building barracks in a couple of them as well. But uh, she would have done better focusing only on units uh, at this stage. It didn't matter though in the end. Let's go exit and go take a look at Peter's cities because those are the interesting ones. Okay, let's go to Peter. It's 38 cities. Sort by population and go all the way to the top. So we have Rostov, size 22, Vladivostok 20, St. Petersburg 19, and we see here the food 47 in Rostov and uh, 40 plus and 30 plus in a lot of places as well. Commerce, uh, yeah, no cities with triple digits, but uh, 72 in St. Petersburg, 78 Yekaterinburg, 52 Yakutsk, and then 68, 67 up here. Power in most of the cities, which means that the production is really good. 96 for an SS casing in Rostov, 94 for a submarine in Vladivostok, 83, 133 in Novosibirsk, building an airport, that's great. 96 for a casing in Magni Togorsk, 
And we see that Omsk uh, size 7 is the bottom city here. So let's go down to the bottom. It was Omsk, wasn't it? Omsk, there it is. And Yaroslavl and below are on page 2. And you can also see the numbers for those cities down there on that list. If you so wish. So let's go take a look at the updated league tables. Spoiler alert, results and updated league tables follows after this screen. Catherine, number 11 with 4 points, negative 12 score turn difference. Peter, up to 6th with 6 points and a positive 6 score turn difference. Now, in just a little while, we have the second game of the day between Gilgamesh and Mansa Musa. Two leaders that are on 3 points and in danger of getting relegated should they lose more. I hope to see you back then for the second game. This has been the Noble Leaders League. I am Shutlike. Welcome back next time. Bye for now. Oh.